PLM family, good night. The borough of Saparia, good night. Thank you very much, uh, Master of Ceremonies. Allow me to recognize in his absence and on his way, our political leader, Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, all officers of the movement, members of the, the head table, party executives, my MP, fellow MP, Minister Stephen McClashy, MP for Labre, the executive councils of Labre, Faisabad, and Saparia, supporters, and most importantly, this afternoon, our 10 winning candidates. We welcome our Prime Minister to the Borough of Separia. He's mine too. So let me introduce myself once more. My name is Kennedy I'm Richards, Member of Parliament for Point 14. As the Master of Ceremonies would have said, I served four terms in local government. Started off in 2010 as a 23-year-old. Then again, in 2016, I became the Deputy Mayor of Point Forted in 2016, and in 2019, I had a short stint of, of about a year as the, as the Mayor of the Borough. And that was from 2010 to 2020. Um, I also hold a position as a, a pilot with Caribbean Airlines, and as I go into my short excerpt, my sister before brought a little bit of fire, so I'll bring a little bit of calm this afternoon and really go into what local government means to the average person. What is local government? Some people may ask. Local government is basically type of government that is basically run by an elected council. And how does local government affect you? Local government is literally responsible for your minor roads, the road repairs, and in some of the restrictions, especially like in Point Fortin, local government is 95% responsible for the road network. Local government is also responsible for garbage collection, cleaning of drains, development of drains, water courses, maintaining playing fields, developing playing fields, sporting facilities, approving housing plans, and even symmetries and crematoriums. Now, for, for the average man, this may seem like, like nothing, 
but these are very important parts of our daily life and our daily being. The community infrastructure and local economic development. So based on this list, local government affects our every, everyday life. And as a people, as we strive for better men and better men daily, we also have to strive for a better local government. Some of the issues in which our Burgesses, and you in Separia would now have Burgesses, have highlighted would be the lack of infrastructural development. We have unkempt playing fields. We have no recreation grounds or unkempt recreation grounds. Lights on those grounds not working properly. And, and we, we have a litany of woes that we can go on and on and on and on and about. And I know that every single person here has been affected by some way or the other with respect to local government. The ease of doing business with the various corporations, that is a challenge. Local labor, everybody seeking employment, especially with the corporation. Local contractors not being able to participate or partake with, the, with, with, with local contracts and projects. We have employment within various municipalities, drains needed cleaning, a litany of problems. And the present system is not one that is built to treat with those issues. And it is focused more on what cannot be done instead of getting things done. And as MP, I would have held various meetings throughout point 14. Team, let's talk point 14. Where we go into communities and we engage with the residents and we try to figure out what are their various, various issues and how are we going to treat with those issues. At every meeting, I had the members of council present. You see, it, it is very important to meet and treat with your purchases because these, those are the people who are, who are actually working for. All right? And if you have a boss, the people are your boss, you need to treat with their issues with sincere and fervent, sorry, sincerely and fervently. And at every meeting, the members of council would have to answer how they go about doing their job and fulfilling the requests of the Burgesses. But at this specific meeting, one of the councillors coined that phrase and he coined it properly. And he called it the four M's. And those four M's are manpower, machinery, material, and the last one being the biggest one to me, is money. And with any of those M's missing, the, the, the entire system falls down. And we are unable to treat with the smallest of problems. And I, that, and, and I know that the, the Prime Minister would have spoke religiously about this over the last year or two with regards to the reform, but we're getting there. Even the smallest jobs cannot be done. So the first M being manpower. One of the challenges you have in local government is that as a council, you're not in charge of the manpower. That is an administrative function. And you all may know that some guys come to work at 7, and by 7.15, everybody disappear. Anybody know about that? Right. And by 7.15, so that's one of the M's. Next problem we have is machinery. So a corporation or a region, or a borough corporation or a regional corporation will have a lot of equipment, trucks, barcodes, some even have excavators, low boys, skid steers. But when is it time to activate, to get a job done? The belt burst, the kind of gas. It's a litany, litany of excuses that you will have that will render the machinery unable to function. That's another M. The other M is material. So even if you have the manpower available and the machinery working, sometimes you have no material. 
And the last one that puts everything together is the money. Without money, you don't have manpower, you don't have machinery, and you don't have material. So I'm coming home with this, with this, with this program. With all this, nothing cannot be solved. But local government is necessary for the delivery of goods and services. And we, the PNM, under our visionary leader, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, has proposed, has proposed what? Has proposed reform. And this reform will treat with all of these issues that local government presently has. In addition, you would have full-time counselors who would be able to double down and focus on the issues and development of their various electoral districts. And I know sometimes in councils, the council is 10 and 11 and 12, but when it's council meeting, they can't even get a quorum. These are the things that we're trying to treat with when it comes to local government reform. As a pilot, we have something called a flight plan. So if you're going between Trinidad and Tobago, you have a computer, you input the flight plan, and you fly the route. But in politics, that plan is called a development plan. And in order to develop as a regional corporation, uh, you guys in Separia know a borough corporation, and for the point forth in borough corporation as well, the only way now is local government reform. What is the only way? We say it like we know it. What is the only way? It's local government reform. I have served 10 years in local government at every level in the Point Fourteen Borough Corporation. And I thank God that I had a very good relationship with the entire administration. Because if you don't have a good relationship with the administration, in this council, crap will smoke your pipe. They will get nothing done, and the same people who vote for you will turn their back against you. But what we are saying in the PNM is that with local government reform, we are going to resource the councils. Right? So these four M's, they're going to resource the council. So the fourth M that I have as money will be the first M. So you would have money. And your manpower, you would also be in charge of your manpower. Because right now the councils cannot hire, cannot fire. That is an administrative responsibility. And a lot of people say that they go to the councillor, go to the mayor, they can't get a work. The mayor and councillor can't give you a work. That is the reality that we face right now. Right? I was a mayor. I couldn't give nobody a work. And what we are saying now, with local government reform, things need to be different. And if you look at the Tobago model, and if you read the reform, it gives you an opportunity not just to hire, not just to fire, but for places like Point Fortin, who have been, been established since 19... I'll get my paper. And I'll get my paper. <laughs> for places like Point Fortin, who have been established since 1980, it would mean that we are functioning on a system where we had a population in 1980. And 30 or 40 years on, 43 now, 43 years on, and you have that population may have doubled or tripled or quadrupled in size. We do not have the necessary manpower. We do not have the necessary equipment to treat with all the needs that face the people within the municipality. So all of these, all these are things that local government reform is going to treat with. And it's not slight that our Prime Minister would have brought local government reform. And I had to go pretty fast here. As MP for Point Fortin, I have studied the issues. And while the majority of issues are local government issues, 
We have a Ministry of Youth Development and National Service who have embedded their, their organs in Point Fortin. And presently, we have ongoing the Chatham Youth Camp is, is refurbishing. Also, we have the Youth Agriculture Homestead Program. The first cohort of 200 people will be right there in, in Chatham in the Southwestern Peninsula. And we have a lot of other infrastructural work that is actually taking place. And what that is going to do is that is, that is going to fit very nicely into the whole ambit of local government reform. And with the development at the central level and the proposed development at the local level with local government reform, we would see development within these municipalities happen at a much faster rate. So I say that to say this. Ten candidates were just presented. And two of those ten candidates are part of the constituency of Point Fortin. So if you're in Cedrus, I want you to come out and give a, 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 a thousand and more support to Mr. Anthony Von Ganes. And in, and, in, and in Aireen, we have the hard-working and effervescent Arlene Ramdeo. I want to make sure and, 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 and give her that support. And in the library end, the young man, Jalen Francis, has been given, he has been given good measure for what PNM is about. And on August 14, make sure and we come out early, Safaria so borrow, PNM, ensure that you are borrow. Let's ensure that this time we control this borrow. So on the 14th, who we voting for? Who we voting for? Who we voting for? And on the evening of the 14th, after the votes are counted and the dust is settled, we'll all be able to say, yeah. and, we, and we have prevailed. And we have prevailed. Thank you.